So today's topic is going to be covering what constitutes a primary lift. Now in short, a primary lift is an exercise, or exercise is plural because you can have more than one primary lift, that immediately follows your warm-up. And what needs to be understood is that the primary lift, or lifts if you have more than one, are going to provide the most bang for your buck, if you will. Their yield is going to be in alignment to the greatest degree possible with what you deem to be desirable outcomes relative to your individual aims. So one primary lift in a single training session can certainly prove to be progressive. However, most common you're going to have either one or two. Three primary lifts in a single training session is certainly less common, but not completely unheard of. Whereas four or more is much less likely to occur and is usually only going to happen in very specific circumstance. The reason why one or two primary lifts are most common in a single training session, three being less common and four or more being further rare, is simply because as the duration of your training session increases, it's inevitable that mental and physical fatigue are going to accumulate. And as that mental and physical fatigue builds, what tends to happen is that your effort is compromised on those exercises that are later in the training structure. And as a byproduct, you are able to drive a lesser yield, which of course is not going to be desirable if your intent is to get the most out of these exercises, which is why often they'll be spread out throughout the course of a week or multiple weeks, depending of course on how a program is specifically structured. So the question becomes, what exercises are the best primary lifts? And the short answer is that it depends. Generally, we find that the best primary lifts check four boxes. The first being that they either prioritize and or rely on larger muscle groups. Secondly, they are relatively complex mentally. Third, they're physically demanding. And fourth, the yield that they drive, the outcomes that they drive as per physique and or performance adaptations are in alignment with the individual lifter's aims. Now, when I say relatively complex mentally or physically demanding, it is worth noting that that is in relation to the individual lifter as well. So what we often find is that primary lifts tend to look like a bench press or an overhead press, a chin up or a pull up, a row, a deadlift, a squat. Now these aren't the only examples of primary lifts, but they're incredibly common examples of primary lifts. But what should also be understood here is that it isn't necessarily your traditional execution of as much. It need not be a conventional deadlift. It could be a sumo deadlift or a trap bar deadlift. It need not be a low bar back squat. It could very well be a barbell front squat. What needs to be understood is that primary lifts often look like these, but they might be variations on as much. However, these aren't always primary lifts. Sometimes, primary lifts look very different. As an example, we might find that a more advanced lifter or a lifter who is purposely prioritizing power development might place Olympic lifts in the position of primary lifts in their programming structure. Further, somebody who is a complete beginner might place a cable row or pull down or a dumbbell chest press into the primary lift position because it fits the bill. It checks all four 
of those boxes that we mentioned earlier. So now that you've figured out a few exercises that check those four boxes and can play the role of a primary lift in your programming, does that mean you're good to go to the gym and start training? Well, not necessarily. You see, showing up to the gym and just doing endless sets of a barbell squat or endless sets of a bench press and leaving is likely not the most effective strategy that you can employ. Now, of course, there might be specific circumstances where that exact strategy is what you have to employ. Maybe your schedule is such that on that particular day, all you can do is your primary lift and you've got to get into the gym and get out as efficiently as possible. However, generally speaking, a well-structured training program is going to incorporate exercises that follow your primary lift. Those exercises are what we often refer to as accessory exercises or secondary exercises. I guess in a sense you could almost consider those exercises to be similar to toppings on your pizza or your burger. Sure, you could of course have a plain patty on a plain bun, but unless you've got the ketchup and the mustard and the cheese and the tomatoes and the lettuce and the pickles and etc, etc, you're certainly far from maximizing your experience. So, in one of the upcoming videos, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into what constitutes a secondary exercise.